This is The Basketball Show with Shane the Hammer Heel and Steve Mr. Magic Carfino. Brought to you by Unibet, TCL Plex, and News Corp. What they gonna say next? Hello and welcome to season two of The Basketball Show. I am Nathan Stremple and it's great. New look, new feel, same attitude, the stories that you won't hear anywhere else Brought to you right here by Closer Sport and News Corp Australia, care of their friends right here at the Daily Telegraph. And I'm joined, as always, by four-time Olympian Shane the Hammer Hill and a permanent fixture this season, Steve, Mr. Magic Carfino. Boys, welcome back. All right, you guys. <laughs> How good? Open the checkbook, huh? How good, huh? <laughs> New set, new... T- oh, great. Very, very good. It's very exciting to be here. Quick thank you to our sponsors as well. Unibet back on board this season. TCL Mobile joining us, about to hit Australia with a new Plex smartphone. And as well as Steve joining a permanent fixture, we've got correspondents coming all around Australia. Derek Rucker, Nick Lakovich and Paul O'Kennedy. But most importantly, our friend here at the Daily Telegraph, head of basketball, Matt Lowe, joining us with breaking stories each week. It's going to be great to have him involved. Certainly will. We're going all over the nation. We're brought out. Our friends involved and uh, lots of hard hitting opinions, I reckon. I know, I think it's going to be a free for all for guys just getting in, getting some sting in, and saying, Oh man, I went, didn't go hard enough this week. I'm going to really make up for it next week. And so, this season, instead of the stroke or instead of uh, under the hammer, you're just going to go with hammer time and bring us the positive or the negative, whatever catches Mate, your we've eye. We've got a basketball. bit of love, and sometimes we're going to have to hammer people as well. But today, we're going with love and we're going for the boomers. How could you not have love for the Boomers? What they did, what they win their first five in a row, they were playing unbelievable basketball, got it uh, done, high-scoring games as well, until it got to that Spanish game, up 15, ended up going down in a close one against the, the powerhouse of the Spanish, and then the same against the French. But that's not what I want to talk about. There's a fine line between success and failure. What I want to be able to stroke those guys about and give them yeah, the love sure. about is those NBA guys. A lot of NBA guys around the world say, no, 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 I'm not going to go this time. I'm going to wait for the Olympics. Not our guys, not our guys. Dalavadova, Mills, Ingles, Baines, Bogut, all for the last 10 years have said, bring it on. I am passionate about putting on the green and gold. I love it. I'm going to sacrifice, leave my family and friends and everything else. I'm going away. They fell short and no one will hurt more than those guys. And as an ex-boomer, I'm proud of them. All right. And I'll really just reiterate on that one because it's the pride and it's known all around the world now. And Bob Popovich was like, that's a close team. Those guys have made sacrifices. They've grown up together. They want to represent their country and they play like it. So, you know, they're getting stroked from all around the world. Hanging out for Tokyo in a year's time. Best finish ever by a Boomers team at the World Cup. We move into the starting five coming in each week care of TCL Mobile, the top five topics in basketball. 24 seconds on the shot clock. Shane, we're coming to you first. And we start off with the New Zealand Breakers. Brand new team on and off the court. What do you think? Well, I'm worried about their culture, and you have to be. They uh, sack their coach after one year of the new ownership. Uh, Shea Illy walks in and says, no, nah, I don't want to be part of this. Dylan Boucher, a legend of the club, he's done as a general manager. Corey Webster says, I'm, I want to leave as well. A lot of talent, not sure how they'll go. All right. So, oh, yeah, yeah overall, a, a ticker across. No, I'm not sure how they'll go, I don't know. I'm worried about where they're at. Okay, so we'll wait and see on the New Zealand breakers. We'll come to your season predictions later. Steve, coming to you now. Brand new team, South East Melbourne Phoenix, looking great. What they put together on court, what are your thoughts about putting together a new group? Well, I say get behind them because they have the proper formula. They've gone about it. They've got the coach. They went and got him. Great coach. They went out and got the Aussies. Imagine Creek. They got some very good Aussies. Got some experienced imports to slot them in where they needed them the most, and usually it's the backcourt because you need leadership there with your primary ball handlers, and they went and got depth. They've done a great job. Get behind the Phoenix because I think they're going to make some work. They're going to make some noise this year. I might have just got that off just in time on the oh. shot clock. Uh, <laughs> that was I'd like say. a college shot clock. That new one. one. New All right, improved. throw it at me. Let's new go. One improved. <laughs> Talked about the boomers at the World Cup, Shane. So NBL guys, especially CG 43K playing big minutes, is that going to help or hinder them NBL season? I think it helps them. I used to love going away to the World Cup, the Olympic Games, playing against the best players in the world. When you come back to the NBL, everything seems slower. You've got more time, more space, easy to be able to create your shot. I think Golding's in for a massive year. I think Nick Kay is in for a massive year as well. Sobe and Glidden, they've had a chance to be able to see world basketball. It'll be very, very interesting for them. Again, using the full 24. Steve, back to you. Uh, Bogut um, made no mistake about letting everyone know what he thought about FIBA. Um, what do you think about the penalty coming his way? 
Well, I, I think the word that you use, mistake. I think that's a mistake to ever say that people are cheating, intentionally go out and cheat. I think he'd like to have that one back. As outgoing, as outspoken as Andrew Bogut is, I think he'd like to take that one back. What the question is, the penalty, because it has to be kind of consistent with the fact that when they had that big brawl, the referees got more of a tap on the wrist than the fans did that started the fight. They had ushers and security uh, guys thrown at. I know I'm passionate about going this. With the cock, I'm going mate. over. <laughs> I'm going over. Be... <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the Philippines, right. the Philippines got nothing, mate. What yeah. can Bogut get okay. when they were throwing chairs and haymakers? Oh, right. Surely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Does he does he get to chime in on my 24 yeah. seconds? Well, he's cut oh, you off there. Yeah, so we're saying, <laughs> in comparison, you might get off lightly. The final one is brand new season. Lots of new inputs. Shane, you're putting together a team. Which input do you pick first? There's no doubt it's Casper Ware. I think he's the best import in the league based on what he's done, what I think he will do. He's the best two-way player in the competition. I think he's the best point guard in the competition and a massive pickup for the Sydney Kings, and he could be that piece to take him to championship glory. Casey Prather going downhill. Ooh, he looks tough, yeah, man. He gets better every year. He's good. I like Ooh, him. Okay. Melbourne has Casey Prather. Sydney has Casper Ware. It's time now to look at those season predictions. So you said they're the best two inputs, Shane. We're going to start with you. One to nine. Brand new team. Nine teams in the NBL. What do you see it playing out this season? Tough. I'm going a flip of the coin between Melbourne United and the Sydney Kings. I'll go Melbourne first. I love their trio of imports. I love Prather, Trimble and Long. Very, very good players. When you throw Golding and McCarran in there. And then the defensive side coming off the bench is impressive for me. Shea Ely, Barlow and Pledger. I think they've got enough to be able to get it done. The Sydney Kings are second. I love what Will Weaver's done. I think he's playing small ball. Guys are playing pretty free. Uh, interesting style. I like Diddy. Call him Diddy. Uh, hey, like P. Diddy? I, I want it to be like Puff Daddy. Diddy. You know? so Diddy, P. Diddy, P. Diddy. I love saying his name. I reckon he's going to be a great player. Um, and no doubt with Casper Ware, uh, Lish as well, Newley, and obviously the MVP of the competition. So they're going to be up there. You can't write the Perth Wildcats off. Uh, Cotton is a superstar in this league. Tariko White, he carried the Perth Wildcats last year. Absolutely unbelievable. Question mark, And Kay is going to be amazing. Question marks about some of the other players, about where they're at. Then I'm going Brisbane, South East Melbourne, Illawarra. I've got Adam. Adelaide second last, and then the Cairns type bands who weren't very good last year, they'll be better this year, but I'm still picking them last. Yeah, you got Joey right down there. You yep. know, he's not going to be happy about that. Well, what do you got? Well, he's always got some surprises, but I'm going to go with Melbourne United. I love Melbourne United. I thought they were unlucky not to win it last year. If they don't run into Bryce Cotton, they're going back to back to back. Then I got New Zealand. That's my surprise team. You know, you're going to like it or you're going to hate it, but... I like it. I like New Zealand. I think that Corey Webster is a monster, and I think the Sydney Kings are tough. They got two guards, defensive guards. They can both make plays in the late shot clock situation, and that's going to be a great thing for them. And also Didi, yeah, of course. That's a, a great one. Of course, the Perth Wildcats, you'd have to be on crack not to pick them in the top four. They do it year <laughs> after year. The Brisbane Bullets, well... Lamar Patterson, is, is he ever going to get in shape if he was in he's better shape? He's in my shape, shape mate. Yeah. He's got the same skin fold as me. <laughs> I know. He's if he kidding. Was, that guy has been out of shape for two straight oh, years. Oh, my. Still producing. We'll see what he if he can if his body can hold up. I like the Phoenix. I like the Cans, Taipans. But, you know, they're going to beat some people because they have that home court advantage. I got the Adelaide 36ers down low, too. They were oh. not impressive in Tasmania. And I have the Illawarra Hawks oh, dead last. Oh, my. Illawarra. Like, dead dead what? last. Okay, you know, uh, Le Le LeVar Ball. He's not playing. I know, but That's he... Lamelo's playing. <laughs> yeah, I know, Lamelo's <laughs> playing. His dad is not going to be happy with whatever minutes that Matty Flynn throws his way. Matty really? Flynn's a rookie coach. He's yeah. going to have to deal with the worst parent as far as getting involved in the team and in the play and in his son's head of any parent in the world. Matty Flynn has got to deal with that. I, it's like... That's going to be Matty Flynn's head he got the halfway Lackers through the coach, season. So. Let Sack. me ask you this, gentlemen. You've got the same top four, slightly different order, but you've got the same team in fifth. Brisbane Bullets, similar core, plus Nathan Sobey. They were finalists last year. You both have them missing out? Uh, no, I think it's going to be close. They're every chance to be able to do it. They've got a very, very good team. Okay, that's your call. We'll no doubt refer to as as the season goes on in terms of which teams have made it. They're on the record now with their order of their top nine. What we're very excited about is adding the Logue down, the news court, uh, head of basketball, Matt Logue, joining us with the breaking news every week. And he's uh, with us live right now. Matt Logue, welcome to the basketball show. Thank you for having me, guys. Pleasure. Matty, great to have you on board, mate. And uh, you're going to be the hard-hitting man uh, giving us all of the stories. What do you got for us to be able to start off the season? 
Oh, we should start off the season with a big one, Hammer. And, um, mate, word out of the, the NBL and from within NBL clubland is that is growing louder that next stars, LaMelo Ball and RJ Hampton, may not play a full season in a bid to prepare for the 2020 Ooh. NBA draft. Now, wow. Ball and Hampton, if they're excelling halfway through the season and depending on where the Hawks and the Breakers are on the ladder, it's understood their agents are leaning towards pulling them, pulling them out so they can start training camp in the U.S. Um, big story, and I've been making a number of calls all afternoon uh, to the NBL, uh, with the Hawks, to the Breakers, and I've got a, a number of guys, including Breakers CEO Matt Walsh, who's um, been kind enough to give us a, a, a few comments. Wow, that's unbelievable, mate. I'm surprised that they would actually be signed as next stars and be allowed to leave halfway through the season. What's that? What, what do we know about that? And, uh, geez, it would hurt those clubs. Yeah, well, if they, if they do go, it's huge, given the numbers, guys, that we're seeing on social media with Ball and Hampton, the Facebook numbers and the Facebook deal that the NBL have managed to, to get up and running is just through the roof. So... My understanding, I've spoken to the NBL today and they said there is nothing in, in, in the contract um, that w- would, would stop them or conversely anything that's set up to that ensure that they have to stay. Um, at the same time, they said that they expect them to stay for the full season, but anything can happen. A lot's going to be dependent on, which is the agent on, agents on where these two players are at in terms of their form, in terms of, as I said, on the ladder, which will be crucial. If they feel it's appropriate that they're better served being in the United States to prepare for the, for the draft. And we've got to remember, these two guys, it's going to be different to Terence Ferguson and it's different to Brian Bowen because these guys are potential top 10 picks. So if, if, if their agents feel that it's appropriate that they go back early, then it, it's on the cards. I've, I've reached out to um, Matt Walsh, as I mentioned, CEO of the New Zealand Breakers, and he, he said, look, at the moment, it's news to him, anything could happen. He expects Hampton to be a breaker all season, but watch this space, things could change. I'm, I'm waiting to hear from the Hawks. So it's, um, it's a big story given, I think, I'm sure you guys will agree, Ball and Hampton are arguably the story of NBL 20 and um, the, the interest generated not only in Australia, but obviously in America is huge. So it would be disappointing if they had to go, but at the same time, sometimes with basketball, these, these decisions are made for the right reasons. Matt, that's huge news. Just to clarify, you say depending where they are on the ladder, just quickly, you saying if they're out of finals contention, that's going to increase the chance of them going? Yeah, yeah, you'd think so. Think, think so, Nate. Like, that, that's something that um, would be taken into consideration. If they are out of contention, then it's like, OK, well, you're better off maybe, you know, going back and getting to training camp. We've seen precedent with this in basketball, you know, in, in, in past years. You don't even look at someone like a Dante Exum before he's drafted. I know... He was injured when he was pulled out. But at the same time, it, it's something that um, player managers are conscious of. It is the first time it's unprecedented in the NBL where we've had two potential top 10 picks in the NBA draft. So you know, it, it, it's a different ball game this time and there's a lot of pressure on these guys to nail down those positions. Um, hopefully they do stay because I think, you know, the NBL season finishes work as far as, you know, in terms of getting to the finals, you know, around that February, March. The NBA draft next year won't be until June. So you'd think that they've got time to prepare. But um, at the moment, these are whispers that are now being discussed by numerous club representatives across the NBL. Uh, so it's great that um, you know Matt Walsh gave us some time today. He said as far as he's concerned, Hanson will be there for the rest of the season. But you, you never know. Watch this space. A lot will depend on form and, as I said, the positioning on the ladder. Matt, thank you so much. That is why you're the best basketball newsbreaker in the business. Huge news there. RJ Hampton, Lamelo Ball may not see out the season here in Australia. Be disappointing if that was the case. I mean, they've had a massive impact as far as people following it from around the world. Yeah, I don't think that uh, their win-loss record will have anything to do with it. If they're playing good basketball and they're perceived as a top-five pick, they're gone. Well, it, it shows you've got to enjoy it while it lasts, and it, we're getting started now, so enjoy the fact those two and many other stars are here. NBL season tips off Thursday night. Let's get into the Unibet game preview. Shane, your rundown of the games coming up. First of all, it's the throwdown. South East Melbourne Phoenix at Melbourne United. That Victorian rivalry is back. Well, the NBL has done a great job to be able to make this the first game, to bring in the Phoenix, playing against Big Brother. They are very, very good, talented. I expect... 
that uh, United are going to be able to flex a little bit of muscle and say, not in our town, we are going to give it to you. And I reckon they'd win that by double figures. Yeah. So you go United there, then you move on Friday night, Sydney Kings at Cairns Taipans. Well, I think Cairns are going to be a lot tougher this year. They've got a really good first five or six players, not the depth that the Sydney Kings have got, so they'll be competitive. But I love what Sydney's done. I love their style. They put points on the board. They'll be too good up north. And then what a round one Saturday night. Melbourne United at it again. They travel over to Perth in a grand final rematch. Well, this is one where I think there could be an upset. Uh, I don't think the Perth Wildcats are playing their best basketball from what we've seen in the preseason. Few injuries, guys coming in and out. Whereas I feel like Melbourne United are in a very good spot right now. And for them to cause that upset and get a little bit of redemption from last year, I reckon it happens in round one. I love it. Shane just renewing his friendships with his friends in the West. And then we go Brisbane Bullets <laughs> at Illawarra. You're such a suck, mate. <laughs> you are. You always do it. Now, down at Illawarra, <laughs> this is going to be a high-scoring game for me. Brisbane Bullets, they want to get up and down. I like what Andre Lamanis has done. A lot of players that play on the perimeter, but they're going to be tough down there to be able to beat. I've got question marks about whether Byrne and AJ can play together. I don't see anyone from the Illawarra Hawks in their prime except for Blanchfield. Everyone's either too young or too old. And uh, just touching the first of the NBL Times NBA games, you've got Adelaide 36ers travelling over to play against Utah Jazz. Oh, you're going to give me those? Yeah. Oh, you're going to throw to me now? Okay. I think Adelaide is a, you know, I don't think they're that strong of a team. I think they're going to get their hat handed to them. Let's just talk about that one right there with the Jazz. They got that big shot blocker in Gobert. You saw him at the World Championships. That's going to be lopsided. Now, which one do you disagree with, mate? Which one? We're poking of the NBL season. If you were on time, you would have understood, mate. That's what we're doing. <laughs> but you got the rehearsals late, so which one do you disagree with? Not mine. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. Shane's I gone United, I Kings, know, United, get... and Bullets. You got to pick, you pick one, one, one mate. No, you... I, I like all of them. I, I hate to. I don't like. You know, I know it's <laughs> oh not. I know it's not in the best interest. I'm going to hold hands show. and sing Kumbaya. You got to pick but, one that you do. But no, on. I agree with him on that mate. one. I agree with him on that. I agree with him on all oh, of them. Okay. I was just shaking my head yes the whole time. <laughs> and the truth is, because I missed the production meeting, I thought we were going to bounce back and forth. I had my opinion on a couple of them. He just kept going. Well, I've put my cheek on the line because my cheeks have missed the gentle crest of your finger, yeah. and I'm going to say the Perth Wildcats will get it done at home okay. against Melbourne United. Oh, I'm favorites. happy to put they my should. cheek on the line there. So let's go. Well, you picked Melbourne, so that's fine. Nice to see Adelaide boy Joe Ingalls playing for the Utah Jazz against the 36ers, the team that chose not to pick him up when he came into the NBL. We move on now into courtside, and this is great. I'm excited about this, gentlemen. We've got uh, people joining us from all around the country. Make sure all all, all parts of this country in basketball are covered, and I get the first throw to a... Just a legend of the NBL, 1990 MVP, three-time All-NBL first team. He's got Queensland covered. It's great to hear from Derek Rucker. His thoughts on the New Look Bullets and the Taipans. And Ruck, who do you pick to take it all out? Hey, guys, thank you very much. I'm very honoured to be a part of the basketball show for NBL 2020. I'll be handling the Queensland teams. Let's get into it. The Cairns Taipans come off of a very disappointing season last year in which they finished on the bottom of the ladder. Coach Mike Kelly will need to be much tougher with his troops this year if he is to get them off the bottom. I think if they win 50% of their home games, which should be a realistic goal, they can finish maybe as high as 7th. No higher. The Brisbane Bullets, on the other hand, have real championship aspirations. They have four of the best perimeter players in the competition, and I think if those guys are allowed to play loose and free, the Bullets are going to be a real problem for teams this season. They move into a new location here in Brisbane, the State Netball Center, so it'll be imperative that they form a strong home court advantage quickly. Now, a tip for NBL 2020. Who's going to win it? the Perth Wildcats. They have the best player in the competition. They utilize him better than any other team utilizes its star player in the competition. They have the best fans in the competition. And just traveling out to Perth is worth five or six victories per season. The Perth Wildcats are my tip. Have a great day. See you soon. All right. And of course, we've got the Melbourne rivalry back in the competition. And it's important that we have our Melbourne correspondents, Paulo Kennedy, PK, who is going to be doing it in Melbourne this year? Are we going to have a strong rivalry or what? Yeah, Melbourne have recruited well, um, but they needed to because they lost some good pieces in the offseason. But what I'm really looking forward to with them is the style they play. 
their assistants, uh, Ross McMaines and Paul Hanare, were the engineers of the Tall Black style at the World Cup, and they really troubled some good teams with their speed. I know Dean Vickerman's keen to incorporate that into what United do, and with Long, Prather, Trimble, McCarran and Golding, they can really execute that style, provided they can keep their turnovers down. The question mark for me is around Long and Trimble, their ability to defend the ball screen at a playoff level. Looking at the Phoenix, I like the fact they've got experienced guards. A new group needs good decision makers. They've got that with Robeson, Gibson, Imagine, and also with Creek and Wesley in the forward spots. The question mark there is Benson in the middle. Can he move quick enough? Can he react quick enough in a league as fast as the NBL? In terms of who wins it all, Perth, Melbourne, Sydney all look very strong. Perth have lost a little bit of rebounding power, but I've got them as the early favourites. They won it in 1990, 2000, 2010, and I'm not betting against them to go all the way again in 2020. Wow, how's the love for Perth? And Ooh. speaking of Perth, we had to bring our man out west, a great basketball mind, in Nick Lakovic. He played for the Wildcats. He's won a championship in their state league. Lacko, can they go back to back? Thanks, Shane. Excited to be a part of the Basketball Show team for the upcoming NBL season. Can the Wildcats go back to back? Great question. The backbone of the Wildcats' success over the last decade has been their stability and depth. Retirements to hire and Jervis and Brand opting out and chasing overseas offers. Also changes to the coaching staff. Most importantly, assistant coach Matt Nielsen. A coach players would go to and coaches would listen to. I think that impact and those key player movements will have them missing out on going back to back this upcoming season. For the Adelaide 36ers, Joey Wright has a pedigree of recruiting high caliber imports. Deshaun Taylor, a motivated defensive guard. Eric Griffin, an explosive player. Uh, alongside Johnson, Drimmick, Ramon Moore, and Harry Froling. They have a talented list, but will fall just short of the top four. But for me, the championship favorites, Will Weaver has done an exceptional job in recruiting and changing a style of play. Diddy Lazada being the pick of the bunch as my championship favorites for 2019-20. I love it. The guy who's actually yeah. from Perth doesn't go for the Wildcats. Because he's smart. That's why we've got him on, mate. <laughs> he says it how it is. I like Didn't the, you hear him? <laughs> I like that Rucker said Perth have got the best player in the competition. I didn't realise that Bogut's gone over the Wildcats. But uh, exciting to hear from our experts around the country and so much to watch as this season goes on, including the prospects coming in. The next stars program sees us bring in LaMelo Ball, RJ Hampton and Diddy Lazada, not to mention Kuat Noy coming as a rookie and so many more. Shane, what do you think about the prospects coming in this season? Season. Well, and it's not just about the next stars. We're going to give you our evaluation of these guys. You look at the Frolings as well that potentially can go to the NBA. I think both of them are good enough talent. But I'm going to rank them right now. Number one, Diddy Lazada, because I just want to say his name. That's oh, a it. sweet he name. Is, oh, Portuguese. And he's, and he's got a sweet game yeah. too. He, and I think he's right now number one just because he's a man. He's played on the Brazilian national team. He plays with pop. I think his role on the Sydney Kings, they need him to go to work. He's playing like an import, not like a next star. I've got him number one. He's impressive. RJ Hampton, I think he's going to play a lot of minutes. I think he's demanded a lot of minutes in New Zealand. He's got a lot of talent around him. Plays with great poise. Really good decision maker. We've seen his athleticism. He can put points on the board, but he can also assist. And LaMelo Ball, we're going to see a guy that can be unbelievable at stages. And I didn't really want to like him because of his dad. But I do <laughs> like him. It, like all the reports are that he's a good kid and he's fitting in well. Good teammate. Doing all the things that's going to make him a great player. We've seen him almost have a triple-double in the preseason games against the Perth Wildcats. We've seen him go one for ten against the Sydney Kings. And that's how his season's going to be playing against men. When you're 18 years old, it's tough to be able to do it day in, day out. So we're going to see him be a little bit hot and cold. What the fact that you brought him up third do you think he's the third best prospect that's playing in the nbl right now no so i'm ranking him right now based on what we've seen as the third behind those other two yeah. right, even though the experts in america are saying that he could be a number one pick you're picking him third yeah so he could be the number one pick yeah but right now based on what we've seen we're valuing him at about third. Okay, yep. but you like him, though. He's six I like foot him. I seven. Think he's good. He's great court vision. Yeah. Great poise. Great teammate. I know you like that. Plays with great angles too, and decision making. I know Damian Martin spoke highly about him. But when people get to scout him and they play him again, that's when he's going to have the challenges. All right. What about his shot, though? Oh, you're, oh. you're a shooting expert. Oh. <laughs> What oh, is it? That's, what, oh. what is it in that house? No more. <laughs> what is it this in that house? Better than long in Chino, in oh. Chino Hills, because they put Chino Hills on the map. What is it about shooting from the left side of their face up underneath their chin 
and letting it fly. Not good. Not good. <laughs> I tell you what, if a guy who drops a triple-double when it's on the line, all the scouts are watching, his predicted number one pick in the NBA draft is the third best prospect in the NBL, we're in for a hot season ahead. It's great to be bringing it all to you, opinions you won't hear anywhere else here at the basketball. Thank you to you, Shane. Thank you to you, Steve. We're back for another season here of the Basketball Show. I'm Nathan Stremple. Thanks for joining us. Check us out on our socials during the week. We'll be back for episode two after round one of the NBL coming at you. This is a co-production by News Corp Australia and Closer Sports.